the American electorate is changing. It's changing fast, and our representatives are not keeping up. Deja Fox wants to be president of the United States one day, but she's not waiting until then to change America. At 20 years old, the reproductive rights advocate was the youngest member of Kamala Harris's presidential campaign staff. While experiencing homelessness as a teen, Fox started a campaign for comprehensive sex education in her Tucson, Arizona school district, and was a founding member of a program helping young people gain access to reproductive health care. Balancing her activism with studies at Columbia University, Fox is emerging as one of her generation's most compelling political voices. What did you ask Senator Jeff Flake when you were 16? And why did it resonate with so many people? When I was 16, I went to a town hall for my then Senator Jeff Flake, who is a Republican who had just voted against Title X, which was the avenue through which I received birth control at no cost to me. What I asked him was why he, as a white man, was making decisions about me and my body and ultimately why he would deny me the American dream, right? To have control over my body, my future, to go on to higher education. Why would you deny me the American dream? (laughs) And subsequently asked him to support Planned Parenthood where I had received services. I think that this moment resonated with people not only because the fight over our bodies and our future is one that we've been fighting for generations and decades, right? But because it touched into a larger issue of representation. That the people making decisions about us don't live lives like us, don't look like us. You know, as I have stepped into this political work, the candidates who I choose to support, put myself and my skills behind, are the people who listen to people, are the people who come from diverse perspectives and experiences, because the American electorate is changing, it's changing fast, and our representatives are not keeping up. When you became Kamala Harris's youngest staffer, what did she have you doing and what did you learn? I took my sophomore year off of college and started working out of the headquarters for Kamala Harris, who was then running for president in the presidential primary. And I worked as the influencer and surrogate strategist on her digital team. I worked full time out of the headquarters. I was the youngest on her campaign, across any of the campaigns at my level of leadership, uh, and one of the youngest in modern history. Uh, And what I got to do every day was explore how we mobilize organic digital communities. So the folks who have one follower to a million followers, how do we empower them with the messages they need to be successful surrogates for us and our message and our campaign and our candidate? Uh, And it was really just exciting because it was a job that hadn't existed before. The internet has evolved so much since even 2016. And so I got to do groundbreaking, innovative, exciting, imaginative work online uh, with people who are both community builders and content creators. Why did you first get involved in politics? For me, my life has always been political. I grew up with a single mom who didn't go to college, who bounced between jobs, right? I grew up in Section 8 housing and on food stamps. And my life has always been dictated by decisions made often outside of my reach. And so I didn't opt in to a political life. A political life chose me. And honestly, when I started really getting active, right, fighting for sex education in my school district at 15, it was because it was affecting me personally, because I didn't have parents at home to fill in the gaps of a sex education system that was last updated in the 80s and didn't even mention consent, right? This was about me and my life. And every day when I fight, it still is. You know, people always talk about like, you made it when you get into a school like Columbia or get a great job. But in truth, I'm still very much dealing with the consequences of that upbringing. How perceptions about sexuality and politics evolve? I make it a part of my activism to post up in my bikini on Instagram and with a vibrator because why not? Because I want to show up as the most whole and authentic version of myself because at the end of the day, I am going to be president and I expect to be a representative of people. And I think any perfect politician is just a very good liar. And I am not. I am a very full, holy me, authentic person. And I think that that's what people resonate with now, right? As we look at social media, it has become much more difficult in my day and age, right? As a young person, our entire lives have been filmed. So don't try to fake it. Don't try to front because everyone has had a phone since they were 11 years old. I've had my Facebook since I was 11 and everyone has a camera at all times. So a new generation of politicians has to be a generation that is authentic 
and truthful and vulnerable and knows how to apologize and say, I'm going to do better because our entire lives have been documented. And quite honestly, if we don't accept that this is true, right? That young women will have made decisions about how they wanted to be perceived and what they posted and make space for them to be whole people, we will lose a generation of women as representatives. And I'm not willing to do that. What advice do you have for younger people who want to get involved? I feel like there's this expectation and it's largely due to social media, right? When you see someone like me who's founded these organizations and has worked at the top of these campaigns, right? It's almost like, where do I start? How do I get there? But you have to understand that there's so much work that has gone into this. I've been doing this work for over five years now, right? Which at an age of 20 is sort of surprising. Uh, but I started out as a volunteer. I started out doing tabling events and door knocking and canvassing. And I wouldn't trade that experience for anything because it has given me the framework that I need to be successful as I've taken on these other leadership roles. And so I would tell young people to start personal. What is your day-to-day -day life look like? And how can that impact other people? Think about what issues are personally impacting you. What are you seeing in the news that's also impacting you, your community, right? Your neighborhood, your life. And then really think about your personal network. Who could you bring along? Your mom, your dad, significant other, friends. How do you bring them into this work? Because if they care about you, they're going to care about what you care about. That is where to start. Don't feel like you have to start an organization or found something or be at the very forefront or in the headlines uh, to be doing good work. It really doesn't start that way often. Uh, it usually starts a lot smaller, and that's okay.